Hello everyone and welcome. Sit back, relax, make a cup of tea or whatever you like to drink and get ready for new stories from Yellow Cat. Send your own favorite stories in the comments below and maybe they'll be in our new video. So subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. Let's get started. Why was that one person terminated from his position at your company? Because he was not permitted to use the restroom until it had been thoroughly cleaned. He became angry and yelled at the person responsible for its upkeep. He also screamed at him and encouraged him to meet him outside for a fight. The person in charge of cleaning is noted for his remarkable composure, politeness, and general pleasantness toward everyone. For someone to have a problem with him means that they have to be a certain kind of entitled a-hole. This happened in view of at least 10 co-workers, me included. Everyone was perplexed, but our manager took proactive measures to address the situation. He instructed the other individual to meet him at the HR office, and then he was terminated on the spot. After the manager had finished his trip, he called a hasty meeting. His exact comments were, everyone in this room is an adult now, or at least some of us are. I just want to put it out there and state that I will be extremely stern to anyone who disrespects any coworker, particularly when they are responsible for making sure that your A cheeks sit on a clean toilet. I just want to get it out there. Also, if you're not willing to follow through with a battle, don't encourage other people to engage in one with you. After the meeting was over, some of us asked him what he meant with that last sentence, and he told us that the guy got violent in the HR office and invited him to fight in the parking lot when he was told he was getting terminated. I will always remember this event. Thus, I believe that I was employed at a GameStop in either 2002 or 2003. There were two nearby, one in a real mall and the other in a strip mall. Back when you could acquire NES and Genesis games at a GameStop, the theory at the time was that strip malls were for retro and old goods, while malls were for brand new shiny things. I worked at a strip mall business, but I was asked if I wanted to be a third key. In essence, consider assistant manager if you don't know. I accepted the job believing it would be for the business I worked for, but I was transferred to the mall location which had a third key already. I was intrigued, to put it mildly, because a retailer never had two third keys. On my first shift at the new job, I learned that I'm taking over for the third key who was let go. In the back office, right now. To put it mildly, the guy was... unusual. Which made my eyes bulge a little. Slim as a rail with long, long black hair, he brought a cube of Mountain Dew Code Red with him to work every shift and finished it all by the end. How was he skinny? Kept his hair pulled back into a ponytail. This is crucial. I also learned why he's getting fired. The manager and the person who's getting dismissed are taken far too long in the back office for a straightforward dismissal. An older woman wanted to purchase Cabela's Big Game Hunter during a very hectic period right after the holiday rush. You don't want this, it's a terrible game, says the ex-third key. The woman claimed that while her husband had specifically requested this particular game, the man had destroyed it and would not even consider selling it to her since there were irate customers standing in line behind her. He was, of course, dismissed. They still haven't left the back office so far as I'm told. It's dead as a doornail. I'm replacing the unstable person who got fired and I was a little concerned about how and when he was going to leave the building. When the guy finally emerges, his eyes bloodshot from crying, I felt a little sorry for him, even though he disregarded the one retail rule. Effing sell stuff. When he reaches the edge where he is going to exit the store and enter the mall proper, he exclaims loudly, The legend will never die! And removes his hair tie while rotating to face the store, sending hair flying everywhere. And... He just runs off right away, running at full speed toward the shopping exit, never to turn away from him. To put what he said into context, it's from the video game Soul Calibur. Though, honestly, I couldn't recall his name. I hope he's doing better these days. But holy cow, I recall how he left the store. My boss became quite at ease in his role. He had so many work orders that they recruited me. In the system, there were more than 70. 
There are 248 units in this mutually owned community. The plumbing and electrical systems in the building need to be updated because they are more than 80 years old. Many units had to be dismantled and brought up to code. We are only in charge of the building's exterior and plumbing and electrical. The work isn't all that difficult. I now manage this place alone and have about eight work orders open in the system after he was fired not long after I started. I became aware of my supervisor's persistent dishonesty. All he really did was sit at his desk and chop lawn. This is because of his overload. He would record work orders as done in the system without really completing the work in order to appear productive. They give you eight extra hours just for being available. It's an hour of drive time plus three hours of overtime if called in. Three or four times a week, I would hear how he was called in. He stated that he was fine with retaining the phones, even if they wanted to rotate us once a week. After reporting his hours, he would put in roughly 15 to 20 hours of overtime. Never entered the system what was done, when, or where, and never punched in any hours. To get a part that was never ordered, I was sent on a run. It absolutely enraged me that I was lied to. I began to pay attention at that point. He would constantly use his truck to acquire refreshments for the staff. When I helped move things in, I saw that a lot of food and drinks would remain in the truck. He replied that he used his own funds to pay. Then, shortly after he had claimed the same thing and taken his pickup, I caught him lying about needing petrol in the work truck and cans. I didn't say anything for very long. Regarding using the CC for purposes other than work, I wanted to address the board. The complaints about unfulfilled work orders began to flow in. It was only for a week or so, but this was my moment. I was hired at the same time as the office manager, and we both clicked. In addition, he was purchasing unnecessary ludicrous tools and even lawn equipment, which he then brought home. I went to the board with the manager, and they initiated an investigation. After some proof was received, he was placed on indefinite leave without pay. We asked the locals questions. I was on call when I was suspended. The strange thing was that I may have only been called in every other week or so. He was profiting greatly from fake overtime. He was doing a weekly fill-up of his truck. He wasn't doing the assigned work. Instead, he was using their credit card to shop for himself. He was let go right away. He ought to have been charged with stealing, but he wasn't. I received full control of the complex, a big raise, and a promotion right away. Getting this area under control has taken a year. Call volume is far lower, and I've saved the company a ton of money. This work is not too difficult. Do the calls when they come in. Don't steal. What is your experience with the absurd HOA rule? A friend of the family was a candidate for the school board. She requested that we hang a sign to let people know that she was running. We positioned it somewhat far back in our yard, under the garden window rather than on the sidewalk or anything. On the neighborhood website, our neighbor, the HOA president, posted an announcement one hour later that stated no political signs are allowed in your yard, and if they are not removed within 48 hours, we will remove them and fine you. Then, immediately after, he knocked on our door and repeated himself. It's the school board! It's not even political! For no other reason than to force us to pay additional money, the same individual placed two liens on our house and at least one on the homes of almost 70% of the neighbors. He also doubled how much we had to pay towards the landscaping tax every year, and then the new landscaping company came half as often as the guys before, and they literally killed the grass at the neighborhood park. Every one of us reported him to the city. He was fired for abusing his position of authority right away. He was forced to relocate because he was unable to handle the disgrace. Garbage cans can't be left or seen from the street. They have to be kept in the garage or out back. No fencing other than vinyl is allowed without proper approval. No other types of fencing are allowed. Or concealed behind the fence that has been allowed. The landscape has to be tidied up, not overgrown, weeded, etc. In addition, if you decide to plant trees, they must come from the list of trees that are permitted and you are not allowed to add any extra structures such as hot tubs, pergolas, etc. Without permission, there will be no xeriscaping. To tell you the truth, it's not that bad because the majority of them were very easy to keep up with and it's great to believe your neighborhood will look good. 
Nevertheless, it's ridiculous to find individuals who just moved in for not having their backyard done. It is absurd to take voyeuristic photographs of a person's garbage that is located on the side of their house just because it is theoretically visible from the street. It is absurd to continue finding someone for the same offense when it is clear that they are already having trouble meeting their financial obligations. Our neighbors eventually moved away, and I fear to think what their bill was. We had a driveway that was broad enough for two cars and had a section on the side that was paved over with rocks that had been there since we built the driveway. It was more cost effective than putting grass there and it was better for planning as we had anticipated that over the next five to ten years after moving in we might buy a couple jet skis or anything else and then we would fill that side in with cement so that we could park the trailer in the back behind the fence. It came highly suggested by our constructors. We were responsible for it and received letters of fines for such a lengthy period of time that our total cost was over $2,000. We were in our early to mid-20s at the time, had recently put all of our savings into a house and intended to utilize any spare money to start working on the yard, open a nursery, or do something else enjoyable along those lines. Instead, I reassured them that we would get to it, but that it would take some time because we needed to save up many thousand dollars at once in order to pay for the concrete all at once. There was no response other than an increase in the penalty. Finally got enough money saved up, sent them a scathing letter with the definition of xeriscaping and how our neatly kept no weeds pretty rocks, extra parking wasn't xeriscaping, and refused to pay for the fine since it meant we'd have another six months at the very least until we could pay for the service they wanted us to complete. And that's assuming they'd stop fining us in the meantime. They decided not to pursue it, which was fortunate for us, but I can't help but feel resentful that we had to shell out all of that cash when we could have bought a new washer and dryer, begun remodeling the basement, decorated a nursery for our unborn child, etc. Thankfully, the community has since seized control of the HOA, and the issues it used to cause have been significantly reduced. I'll still never move into one again. My father eventually staged a coup and took control of the HOA, but before that happened, there was a ridiculous rule that they tried to impose on us, and we fought tooth and nail against it. The first rule stated that cars were not allowed to be parked on the grass. The purpose of the restriction was to prevent abandoned automobiles from piling up in increasing numbers. So, Dad goes out and buys a bunch of landscaping timbers and rebar, and we stake the tires in place. Then we dig out all of the dirt and feed of grass. It was mostly dirt under the trees, and we filled it in with road crush gravel, effectively adding a place where an RV, which was only parked there when we were preparing it or cleaning it out, or two vehicles can be parked. The HOA protested that we violated the rules, but we maintained that it was road-grade gravel and that it was no longer the yard. Furthermore, we went the extra mile to ensure that it wouldn't fade away. They backed down after being advised by their legal counsel that we were technically in the right. Part 2. Each adult driver was restricted to having only one vehicle in the driveway at any given time. The purpose was the same as stated previously. The first thing that they went after was Dad's Jeep, which he was working on constructing. It was parked down by the yarn, typically under an overhang and under a tarp. Because it was a project vehicle, it wouldn't always run, but it did run the majority of the time. Dad insisted that it wasn't on the driveway, but rather on a park pad in the backyard close to the barn, or even occasionally inside the barn itself. They retreated and informed him that there would be no more cars available for him. In later years after my grandfather's passing, he left me an automobile in his will, and I eventually inherited the vehicle. They made another attempt to find Dad less than 24 hours later. It's registered and insured in my name. I'm not an adult, and it's the only vehicle I own, so I'm exempt from Part 2. And it's parked on the driveway extension, so it's not in the grass, so I'm exempt from Part 1, he says. He also says that I'm exempt from Part 1 because it's not in the grass on the driveway extension. They are seething with rage. Approximately six months later, on the occasion of my birthday, my father gave me an old S10 to use as my own project car, truck. 
We started dismantling it and made sure to store it in the barn until it was operational enough to be registered. At that time, we registered the automobile in the name of my sister, and I took responsibility for the truck. The board descended upon us like vultures the first morning all four vehicles were parked in the driveway and attempted to issue a fine to me, even though I was only 16 years old. I believe it was approximately six months later when Dad gathered enough votes in secret to topple the board via a vote of no confidence. After that, he got down with the attorney and tossed a bunch of the silly bylaws out of the organization. Thank you for subscribing, the likes, and the comments. We're very happy to see you all in the comments too. Thanks for your support.